Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to this paper. I'm Bo Wenzhang from Tokyo Tech. Today I'm going to introduce our paper FlexMatch, which is an improved algorithm from FixMatch by introducing our proposed technique, curriculum pseudo-labeling. Pseudo-labeling is a very powerful and widely used technique in semi-supervised learning. Modern semi-supervised learning algorithms use this technique to achieve good performance, such as the existing state-of-the-art algorithm FixMatch, Yuda. In these algorithms, they used a high fixed threshold to select only high quality pseudo labels. Though having its effectiveness, we believe that there are some drawbacks of setting such a high fixed threshold. First, for classification tasks, different classes can actually have different inherent learning difficulties. For those difficult classes, the prediction confidence can be relatively low compared with those easy ones thus being more likely to be, select, uh, to be filtered out by the high threshold. This results in that in each batch, especially in the early stage of the training, there are more samples of easy classes than of difficult classes, and this is bad for the global convergence, and also bad for difficult classes to obtain a high final accuracy. Besides, in the very beginning of the training, the model's predictions are not reliable. The selected samples with incorrect pseudo labels will lead to bad optimization steps. And since the confidence tends to be low in the early stage, the data utilization ratio may not be high. Here we show the convergence curve of fixed match, which uses a fixed threshold, compared with our uh, flex match, which replaces the fixed threshold with flexible ones. As we can see, while fixed match has major fluctuations in its loss descent, FlexMatch's curve is much smoother and decreases much faster. And in this slide, we show the per-class accuracy when using a fixed threshold. That is, while some classes are already well learned, some other classes are still learned very badly. And these are exactly the hard-to-learn classes that we refer to. But if you replace the fixed threshold with our flexible ones, it will surprise you by having those hard-to-learn classes also well learned. So you can see why the global convergence speed of fixed match is, uh, of flex match is so fast. Okay, um, from now I will introduce the strategy of designing such flexible thresholds. First, let's talk about what properties should the thresholds have. The thresholds should be different for different classes so that they can make per class adjustments. And then it should be lowered down for those hard to learn classes to give them more opportunities but raised back once they get well learned. Finally, we hope such adjustments are dynamically and automatically done along the training, and hopefully it doesn't involve any new hyperparameters or additional computation burdens. Actually, these are exactly the characteristics of our proposed method. An ideal way of getting such thresholds is by directly multiplying the fixed threshold by the per class accuracy. In this way, when the accuracy is high, the threshold keeps high, and uh, vice versa. This can be formulated as this equation, where the small tau is a high fixed threshold used in fixed match, and a subscribed t of c is the accuracy of class c at time step t. This is very ideal formula, um, and it, it works very well actually, but it has two problems. First, it requires a labeled validation set which is very expensive under SSL settings because we already had a lot, um, very limited amount of labeled data. Second, this will introduce a lot of computational burden because we need an extra um, evaluation step after every single iteration. Therefore, we use an alternative approach, which is called curriculum pseudo-labeling, abbreviated as CPL. In the left side, in the left side of this figure, CPL considers prediction confidence of all classes at all previous time steps and uses the number of samples that reach the tall, which again is a fixed threshold, to estimate the learning effect of each class. It then uses the estimated learning effects to adjust the flexible thresholds. To be specific, the first step is the learning effect estimation. Here, our, um, our key assumption is that the learning effects of a class can be reflected by the number of samples whose prediction fall above the high fixed threshold and into that class. 
We denote the estimated learning effect as sigma, and sigma subscript t of c in this formula is actually just a count of number of samples that are predicted to belong to class C and have prediction confidence greater than tau. Then we apply a normalization step as described in the second formula to make the estimated learning effect sigma have a range between zero and one. Now, if we directly multiply beta by tau, we should already have a functional flexible threshold function for class C. But here we further employ two more tricks to ensure better performance. First, why the threshold warm up? That is, in the early stage, the predictions are not reliable, which I've already talked about earlier. Therefore, we don't fully trust the number of samples above tau. Instead, we write the denominator of the normalization step as the first formula in this slide. This has an effect to make all thresholds gradually increase from zero, and all samples will have their chances to be used in this stage. The second trick is a nonlinear mapping function to replace the direct multiplication with tau. And, um, and here we are in favor of a co convex mapping function, like in this figure, which is more sensitive when x is large than when x is small. This makes more sense because when beta is small, it's more unstable and may make major jumps. And in most of the time, beta is in a very high range because most of the samples have already reached, at least once, uh, tau in the middle or late stage of the training. So putting them all together, the formula at the bottom describes the design of, of, the, uh, of the flexible threshold of class C at time step t. Finally, let's look at the experimental results. In this table, PL stands for the uh, slow labeling algorithm, and the flex prefix denotes after applying our CPL. Particularly, when applying CPL to fix match, we call our improved state-of-the-art algorithm flex match. The experimental results suggest that CPL can bring major improvements, and it's especially powerful when, first, the number of label data is limited, second, the task is complicated, and it has some other advantages such as it can dramatically improve the convergence speed, and it doesn't involve any new hyperparameter or additional computations. And that's all for this talk. Thank you very much for listening.